I'm interested in doing a PhD. I have a research idea in mind and I think I'm ready for the jump up in my studies. But what if my research topic isn't strong enough? What if I don't have the skills to do a PhD? What will my supervisor think of my topic? Do these concerns sound familiar? Don't worry, we are here to tell you that you're not alone. It is common for prospective postgrad students to have these worries. After all, a PhD is a big commitment of time and money. And two, as valid as these concerns are, they should not be holding you back if a PhD is actually what you want. The goal of this video is to put some of these common concerns to rest, give a little bit of perspective on some common aspects of postgrad study and leave you with the confidence that you are in fact good enough to do a PhD. A PhD is a big research undertaking and universities and supervisors are meant to make sure that the students enrolled have what it takes to complete what is demanded of them. It is going to be very different from what you've done before, including things like in-depth research on a unique topic and the freedom to create your own timetable. So there are entry requirements. They are important and depending on your circumstances, some of them will need to be met, but don't let them scare you into thinking that a PhD is not in your future. If you are an international student, meeting certain requirements like the language test are a non-negotiable since they are meant to meet both admission and immigration requirements. But it is a good thing that they're simply tests that you can prepare for and we have a ton of information on our website on how you can ace them. We also have a YouTube video that we'll link down below. Most students do a master's before they do a PhD, but it is possible to go straight from an undergraduate degree to a PhD. It usually depends on your personal experience, subject area, and the duration of your PhD program. It is more common for STEM programs, but it is not impossible for arts and humanities programs either. PhDs are typically focused on niche topics, so it is possible to do research in a subject area that you're not directly experienced in. Instead, do you have experience of research that is relevant to the subject you want to study? For example, you could have independently managed a research project before. This would come in handy if you're applying for an Arts and Humanities PhD without a Master's and need to show relevant experience of research and knowledge in a particular area. Though, it is worth keeping in mind that even if a Master's is not a requirement and you think you have the skills, it may still be beneficial in particularly competitive situations. You could also look at integrated PhDs, which include a year of training before you move on to a full three-year PhD. You could also complete a master's by research, MRes, or an MPhil as part of this. It is one thing deciding you want to do a PhD, and a completely different thing deciding where to do a PhD. And with so many projects, programs, and university rankings, it is overwhelming to decide what is best for you. Yes, higher ranking universities are often prestigious and known for their quality of education, but are they the be all and end all? What if you don't get into a number one university? What if you don't get into Oxbridge or a Russell Group University? Will that mean that your PhD won't have been worth it? Absolutely not. Only looking at a number or a name is not the entire picture and there are so many things to consider when deciding where to do a PhD. We do encourage you to have a look at the ranking tables and get the lay of the land, but there are a few things to consider when looking at these numbers. One of the biggest things to consider is who your supervisor is going to be. Yes, PhD research is largely independent, but a good supervisor can make a lot of difference. You may be looking at a number one ranking university, but may find that no supervisors in your department specialize in your area of research. Or you may already have a list of supervisors in mind who you want to reach out to, but they may not be at a Russell Group University. Just remember, under the right supervision, your research will thrive. Don't fixate on the name of university. Instead, look at the features that have earned them this reputation 
and how that can help you with your research. Do they have the means to support your research? Do they have the latest lab technology you need? Are they known for top-notch research in your subject area? You could look at the Research Excellence Framework, which assesses an institution's research based on output, impact and environment. We link the latest one published in 2021 in the description box. Along with all of that, you'll need to consider location in case you don't want to move away from home, university fees and support. A PhD is solely made up of your independent research and each project is different. This also means it is hard to judge the quality of research since there is nothing to directly compare it to. If you're worried that your research isn't good enough, there are some broad core values that universities judge PhD projects against. Your research has to be original, which only means that it has to be based on primary evidence. This could be a diary, a document, or the results of an experiment, and you must be able to articulate your own ideas. Your research also needs to provide significant contribution to knowledge. Now, significant does not mean revolutionary. Your PhD needs to provide new insight and be worthwhile. That's it. To be significant, your research could be demonstrating the use of a concept, contributing to existing research, or demonstrating practical implementation of a theoretical example. Essentially, you do need to discover something new, but it doesn't need to be field changing. A new small advancement is all you need for your PhD. This could be a new angle to existing research or bringing to light an underused source. There is no one parameter for being good enough for a PhD. And remember, the PhD should be working for you as much as you're working for it. Despite being reliant on your independent research, you are meant to learn and grow while you're a student and nobody expects you to know everything before you begin. If you're ready to take the jump, Hopefully, we've helped you bury some of these concerns and are leaving you a little more confident in your PhD search.